Hello everyone, so Blue Origin had a successful test yesterday, my time when I'm recording yesterday, of the new Glenn rocket. And this is the second launch of the rocket, in this case sending the escapade probes over to Mars, though not directly. This is not a Mars window. Originally they were supposed to be sent last year, which was a Mars window, but it got delayed. So they send it now, and in this case, New Glenn is going uh, sending them to a solar orbit, and then they're going to swing by Earth again, and then when they swing by Earth again, they're going to get a boost to Mars. So they are somewhat delayed in their arrival to Mars, but at least they're going. So it's not a direct to Mars thing, just to be clear. Uh, but people have uh, suggested that I try to land New Glenn on a drone ship, and in fact, the drone ship that I made for my Kasei rocket was deliberately made after Jacqueline, the drone ship for Blue Origin, and that was because I intended to do, to do this. However, before we get to landing this on a drone ship, I have to first figure out how to modify it so that it matches the real life performance. Because right now, I'm afraid my version of New Glenn is overperforming the real thing. And so I've got the numbers, I have to translate them from feet and miles and stuff like that, miles per hour, <laughs> so that I could get the numbers relevant to what we have here. Uh, and what I've got is they separated the first stage at three minutes and nine seconds. And so I've told the script that I have that that is when we are going to do things. And the altitude they were at was 76.2 kilometers. And the speed, assuming that they were showing us the ground speed, which I think is correct, was 2,070 meters per second. So let's see what this does. It is currently carrying, however, 45 tons. So it is carrying the max rated payload to low Earth orbit while recovering the first stage. So we're going to see whether it can do that too, ultimately. But first I have to see whether the first stage is overperforming or not, and I just know it is. So we're going to have to make adjustments. Now it takes a long time and then it initially drops down. That's actually just a KOS foible. If I was launching it myself or with smart ASS, it wouldn't drop down at all. The first thing you'll note that is it very apparently seems to move a little bit faster, even though its thrust to weight ratio is about 1.3. So the real thing's thrust to weight ratio is probably less than 1.3. The Saturn V rocket initially had less than 1.3 as well, it was like 1.15 to 1.2. However, over time the F1 engines on the Saturn V rocket were uprated. Also, the engines tended to have variable output because the they were not they, they were basically handcrafted engines back in the day. So there was some variability in them that was considered acceptable. And the Apollo 13 launch, I think, had a lower thrust launch than normal. One of many, many problems on that launch. If anything, the script should be less efficient than what they actually did, so that's not a problem. I mean, if it's less efficient, then I don't have to nerf it, right? But I'm expecting that I'm going to have to nerf the first stage. And if that's the case, then there's three things that we can do. Either the first stage is heavier, or the engines need to have a reduced thrust, or the engines have a reduced efficiency, which is the specific impulse. I'm expecting that we're not going to change the specific impulse. So it's either going to be the thrust or the mass of the stage. I've seen people say both things are a problem. so. I'm not sure which one I'm going with, and that's part of the reason I'm making a video on this instead of just correcting it and trying the drone ship landings. It's because I'm not entirely sure which one it is, and maybe some people have a point of view on that. On the drone ship landings, of course, I mentioned that I have used the drone ship with my Kasei rocket. I have not been consistent about getting landings on the drone ship yet. So even if I did get to that part, I'm not sure I can do it consistently. Like I might accidentally get it right once, but that's not very satisfying. I'm not the type who 
like gets it one out of a hundred times and then posts that video, I like to be able to do everything that I do consistently. So we are not there yet. And so I try to make that clear when it's not a consistent thing. So probably when we do do the drone ship video, I won't just have the one success. I'll probably post some failures as well to show the reality of the situation. We are coming up on the separation at 3 minutes and 9 seconds was what I saw on the Blue Origin cast. So hopefully their clock was right. I saw a different cast where the clock was at 3 minutes and 13 seconds, so... Okay, shut down. Oh, it separated the fairings at the same time. I didn't mean for that. I have to check the timing on the fairings. Okay, so we are clearly way higher than 76 kilometers and 2,070 meters per second. As far as how much we saved in here, 2,574 should be plenty for a landing. But maybe it wouldn't have had that much if what we're talking about is, you know, a low thrust situation or a heavier first stage. I mean, first of all, it wouldn't be going that fast. It's ends up going 2070, 2070. So we're about 500, 600, that was the fairings. That's when the fairings were supposed to go. It was just a staging error. Uh, so we're going about 500 to 600 meters per second too fast at that point. Now we're carrying the 45 ton payload here. So if this stage is all correct, then what this means is we are probably not able to carry a 45 ton payload to orbit while recovering the first stage uh, unless we save less in the first stage. Now they might have been trying to nail the first stage landing in which case they might have spared some extra fuel in the first stage uh, that they could have used to give this more of a boost. That's possible. Uh, but when I initially wrote the launch script for this I actually went with a separation time of 3 minutes and 5 seconds not 3 minutes and 9. So we're already going a little bit past where I had it before in order to get the 45 tons to orbit. And so, well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll have to make adjustments and see. I'll do a tentative adjustment on the thrust. We'll just go with the thrust because it just visibly seemed to lift off slower than what we have here. But then, of course, the mass could also have that effect. But um, changing the mass on the first stage would require a restart of the game. Changing the thrust just means I thrust limited. So that's not a problem. That's less of a hassle at this point. But originally when I made the mass, the performance of the rocket and all that business, it was in order to get a 45 ton payload to orbit. So any increase in mass or reduction in performance of the engines is going to mean that it doesn't get the 45 tons to orbit. So, sorry to rain on the parade here, but, you know, it was a very good launch. I really liked it. It was pretty much perfect. And I, I ought to be clear, if I had to design a rocket right now, I would probably design New Glenn. I mean, it's not the Cassate rocket that would be my sort of first go-to. New Glenn is pretty much what I would go with. It's just that I would need it to actually get the 45 tons to orbit. 45 tons is the minimum for me. So 45 tons is what I want to get to orbit, and I'm fine with a methane oxygen first stage and hydrolox second stage. I think this is a very nice second stage. It's comparable to an S4B stage or, you know, uh, one of the J2X stages. Uh, it's sort of in that class, so I think, in fact, it, it would be suitable for that uh, uh, shuttle C thing. Uh, we could even do that. Maybe I should do that. But, yeah, so I, I like the stage as long as it gets the performance it needs. And right now we're running these at 444 seconds. I believe that's correct. They did give some new numbers and stuff like that. So 444 is what we've got here. And then the B4 is at one point in time they mentioned the thrust of them and the uh, specific impulse. So they shouldn't be less, but maybe they are. Or maybe the stage is just heavy. Okay. And we are in orbit. 
pad. Oop, no, I didn't want it to throttle up there. Um, and just barely, 102 meters per second left, and that's with the 45 tons. So, if it was, if the first stage was performing like this, it gets the 45 tons to orbit and probably has enough for the drone ship landing. Uh, but we know that it got too high and way too fast. So actually, we should have ended up 500 to 600 meters per second short. Well, okay, maybe 400 to 500 since we have 100 left in there. So then how much do we need to reduce the payload? Well, let's take a look at the situation. Just to see, let's say we need another 400 meters per second. What does that end up meaning? So we're talking about maybe 38 tons. If we bring it down to the escapade level, we still, I mean, we're going to need the remaining fuel to be able to boost us. I guess we can test that. I mean, we might as well make it as consistent as possible. So how heavy exactly was escapade? It seems like it was a one ton payload. Whether there was any fuel left over in the second stage, I don't know. Okay, yeah, we're, we're not going to be too concerned with that. We're just interested in making sure that when we get to 3 minutes and 9 seconds and the first stage shuts off, we're at 76 kilometers and 2,070 meters per second, and we're going to see what it takes to do that. Okay, so what I'm doing is, in the script, I've told it to knock the thrust down by 5%. So you'll see that the throttle is down 5%. So we're going to do it like that. It'll just be throttled down and we'll see the effect. We were going both higher and faster than they did. So there has to be a change. It's not a trajectory thing at that point. Well, off it goes. Still not quite as slow as it seemed in, in the launch. So maybe just knocking it down by 5% is not enough. Well, we're faster now. We're now also higher. So we need to knock it down more. Also, the thrust rate ratio is getting a bit high here. We made the payload lighter, right? We took off the 45 tons and put only the one ton on. So now we're going much faster. So we have even more nerfing to do. <laughs> I'm going all the way down to a throttle of 85%, but that's not the real thrust adjustment because the throttle range doesn't go all the way down to zero for them. So we'll see what the thrust rating ends up being. Okay, so right now they're running at 91%. And that's 91%, which means what thrust? 2160 at the ground. 306 seconds ISP at the ground. Alright, so that is 83 kilometers and still really fast. <laughs> um, so we have to knock it down more. I mean, really, at this point, they can't be that far off. It probably is the mass. Okay, this will be the final test for this video. We'll get close, but I think we probably don't want to nerf the engines this much. And so what we're looking at is partly an engine nerf and partly increased mass in the first stage. Right now we're all the way down to 2080 kilonewtons. 
the affected throttle is 87 percent. Whether it's less thrust or greater mass, both ways would lead to a slower ascent. As long as we hit the right altitude, the fact that we might be going a little bit fast can be compensated for by potentially it being throttled down at that point. So it might have throttled down. And then we would end up slower. Then it would end up reserving more fuel for landing. But anyway, so that's possible. But we can't be both exceeding the mark in altitude and in speed by a great amount. Okay, that's just about 76. We're a little bit fast, 400 meters per second, but we can adjust that by throttling down. Maybe we could give it a little bit more thrust. Right now we're talking about knocking it down to 87%. So maybe it's like 94% and then we add some more mass to the first stage. Could be a lot of things. But for now, let's see whether we get to orbit with a decent amount of delta V for the little escapade probe mass equivalent. Oh, this doesn't need to be... well, once the fairings go off, it'll be throttled up again. But a slight inefficiency because we're throttled down right now here. Okay, off go the fairings. Well, we have a whopping 9,700 meters per second with the stage with only one ton on there, so that's not too much of a problem. But if it's underperforming the 45 tons, then we'd have to say it would benefit even more with a third stage. As I made the case before that New Glenn needs a third stage for higher orbits, it would even more need a third stage for the higher orbits. We don't want a single stage trying to develop, uh, deliver 9,000 meters per second. That is definitely inefficient. I mean, unless it's a nuclear stage. I mean, yeah, we will get to orbit with plenty of delta V. With, you know, one ton of payload. It would be enough, in fact, to transfer it directly to Mars if it was the Mars window, as one would expect. But we're not really concerned about sending one ton anywhere. Hopefully this is the last time New Glenn only carries one ton. Yeah, no worries there, 4,900 meters per second. Uh, what we have to be more concerned about is exactly how much it can carry to low Earth orbit now instead of the 45 tons. Probably, like I said before, the 38 tons is a good estimate. For now, I'll just leave it here and we will ponder this and I'll have to make adjustments before trying the drone ship thing again. And that's going to be a whole other ordeal. We'll see how that goes. But with this, I, I'm sorry to be a little bit of a downer after this great achievement by Blue Origin, but I do apparently have to nerf my mod. So <laughs> with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.